Hey guys, in today's tutorial I'm going to talk about the main problems people have with charcoal and how to fix or avoid these problems. I am Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. And while I have a chat to you about this topic, I will show you the process of how I created this recent charcoal drawing of a panda. If you'd like to follow along with a full step-by-step -step, real time tutorial of this guy, you can click the link in the description to my Patreon channel. A lot of people tend to avoid using charcoal because of some of the problems or issues that they have when they're working with this medium. So what are the main problems that people have when working with charcoal that cause them to avoid this medium altogether? And how do you overcome those issues? One of the problems that people have with charcoal is that they struggle to get lighter values. It's actually not as hard as people think to get those light values. And one of the main techniques that I like to use is to apply a really light layer of charcoal pencil or powder and then blend it out with a soft brush and use an eraser to lift up the charcoal. So you're basically drawing in the highlights with an eraser. I like using the Tombow Mono Eraser for smaller areas because it's got quite a small tip on it. But if you don't have one of those erasers, you can actually cut a small sliver off of any eraser that you have which will create an edge or a point for smaller areas. Another reason that people avoid charcoal is because it has the potential to smudge once it's finished. So a lot of people try and keep their finished drawings in a plastic sleeve or display folders, which can actually be quite problematic for charcoal drawings because they can smudge really easily when you take them in and out of the sleeve. And although I don't personally use fixatives to set the charcoal, that is something that you can potentially look into, but the way that I avoid smudging once the work is complete is to actually store it inside of some tracing paper pads. So that way there is a sheet of tracing paper between each of your drawings, and this will help protect your drawing as well as protecting your other drawings as well. I just keep this pad in a flat drawer until I either sell my work or decide to frame it. Before I talk about some of the other problems people have with charcoal, if you'd like to follow along with my longer real-time tutorials where I talk you through every step of the process, then Patreon might be the solution for you. For a small amount per month, you'll have access to every tutorial that I've previously uploaded on your chosen tier level in a variety of mediums like pastel, coloured pencil, graphite, watercolour and more. You'll also have access to the original reference photo, a traceable outline and a list of suppliers including the exact colour names that I'm using so you really can follow along every step of the way. My tutorials don't skip any stages or cut out important parts of the process and I will share all of my secrets to help you improve. There's no lock-in contract so you can upgrade or downgrade to an alternative tier level or you can cancel your pledge if Patreon isn't right for you. Every month I will upload brand new tutorials to the library so you can grow and develop your drawing and painting skills and take your art to the next level. You can also join in on our members chat group where you can ask questions or advice and share your artwork and talk to other members in the Patreon community. The link is in the description if you want to check it out. Another main problem with charcoal is the mess involved. This is probably the main issue that people have with charcoal because it can get all over your hands or your desk or your drawing or anything else that you come in contact with. So there are a few tips that I have that will help cut down on the messiness of charcoal. The first is to avoid using your fingers to blend the charcoal. So a few things that you can use instead are cotton tips, you can use makeup brushes or watercolour brushes or just other sort of soft paint brushes. You could use a blending stump for smaller areas and you can also just wrap a tissue around your finger. That way you won't get any charcoal on your hands when you go to blend it. So another way to cut down on the messiness is to actually tape your work down. If you tape it to a board or something that you can move around, when you get excess charcoal or charcoal dust around your work area, you can actually take that board to a bin and then tap it upside down so all the dust comes off into the bin rather than blowing it over your desk or your work area. Also, when you tape your work down, you end up with a really nice clean border that's around the outside of your artwork. So that really helps when you're moving your artwork or storing your artwork or framing it because you can actually hold on to that clean border where there's no charcoal so you don't actually touch the drawing itself. Another good tip is to use a sanded paper or pastel mat. 
And pastel mat is the paper that I like to use for a lot of my pastel drawing, sometimes colored pencil and other mediums as well. And I sometimes use it for charcoal. So when you work on a sanded paper or pastel mat, it grips the charcoal really well. So it kind of sticks to the paper a little bit more than if you worked on a smoother surface. So it basically just results in less dust coming off. If you are like me and you like to work with charcoal powder, a good tip that I have is when you first get your container of charcoal powder for the first time, I'd highly recommend opening it over a sink because I've made this mistake numerous times where I've opened the new container of charcoal and it's just gone all over my work or all over my desk. So I'd recommend opening a new container over a sink and then get a small container and just tip a little bit of the charcoal into that container and then keep that small container in a slightly bigger container. And I know that probably sounds over excessive, but for me, it really keeps my work area clean and it keeps the charcoal powder inside of those two containers. There's a lot less mess if you do that. Another good tip is to keep a damp cloth or some wet wipes nearby. And that way you can clean off your fingers, your hands or your desk if and when you need to do that. So you can just spot clean any mess that you may have made. So another good tip to stop some of that mess is to use charcoal pencils instead of charcoal sticks. And this may seem obvious to some of you guys who usually work with charcoal, but when I first started, I didn't actually realize that charcoal pencils existed. So they're a really great alternative to the charcoal sticks because you don't actually touch the charcoal, so it doesn't get all over your fingers while you're using it. And if you combine that by blending with a brush or a cotton tip or a tissue, and then you don't really need to touch the charcoal at all. And a good tip while you're working on your charcoal piece is to rest your hand on a piece of paper or glassine. I usually just use the protective sheets that come in the pastel mat pads, but any type of tracing paper or glassine or really just any type of paper, if you rest your hand on a piece of paper instead of on your artwork, you're obviously not going to get the charcoal on your hand that way and you won't smudge that onto other areas of your artwork. I personally love using charcoal and in comparison to graphite, you can actually create really rich dark shadows and you can get just enough detail to make it look realistic without spending loads of time on a drawing. It's also got quite a matte finish to it, whereas the darker colors in graphite aren't as dark and they are usually really quite shiny as well. So I really love charcoal because of those reasons. So if you're thinking about trying charcoal, but you're finding it too messy, hopefully you can apply some of these tips and really start enjoying that medium. I've got a playlist of some other graphite and charcoal tutorials on the screen. So click on that and I'll see you over there.